sisters in Christ, it is a great joy to be with you all today. Now, it's customary for one to expound upon the gospel and or epistle reading of the day as a means of providing spiritual nourishment for the needs of life and for encouragement as the faithful seek to grow in the life of faith. Today, it is fitting for us to meditate on the readings that we had today together because they offer us a contrast that can challenge us to our cores. The Gospel reading, we hear two remarkable miracles. The episode in the life of Christ begins with a man named Jairus, who was who a ruler of the synagogue, coming to the Lord and falling at Jesus' feet. This act of piety comes from a place of great angst, however. For Jairus' 12-year-old daughter was ill and close to death. Moved as it seems by the man's reverent and faithful request, Jesus begins to venture to the man's home. On the way, however, with crowds pushing in all around him, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had spent all her living upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately the flow of blood ceased. Now Jesus, in response to this, asked, Who touched him? For he felt power go forth from him. When the woman came forward, sharing that she had been healed immediately upon touching his garment, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. She is healed by her faith. Keep this theme in mind as we continue to the second miracle from today's Gospel reading. In the midst of this, a man from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter has died. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not fear, only believe, and she shall be well. Despite her recent falling asleep, the Lord's word proved true. For when he takes the girl by the hand, calling her, saying, Child, arise, her spirit returns to her, and she got up at once. I want to draw our attention to Christ's words to Jairus, Do not fear, only believe, and she shall be well. It is belief, faith, trust in Christ that is the foundation of these two miracles. Our faith is one that hopes expectantly for the miraculous. The cornerstone of our faith is that healing, salvation, eternal life are open to us through faith, our trust in Christ. However, we receive from Paul in the epistle today a sobering reminder, standing almost in contrast to the reality of healing and resurrection. Paul speaks of a great suffering, an illness like a thorn that was in his side. So great was his suffering that Paul besought the Lord three times for relief. But alas, to no avail, the Lord simply said to him, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. This is challenging. How can we reconcile the contrast we find between the two readings? How do we make sense of the reality that some are healed, brought back to us, while others are not? What do we do with the words of the Lord, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness? Perhaps we could preserve if the sufferings were our own. Say, God's will be done. 
Yet this might not be so easy if we are encountering the suffering of our loved ones. If, like Jairus, our child or spouse or parent or friend are near death, would we be as accepting in this circumstance? Perhaps not. I wish I could offer words to make reconciling these two des disparate realities easier. But alas, I cannot. Part of our life of faith is coming ter to terms with the reality of ambiguity, uncertainty, impermanence. Life is fragile. It can be fleeting. However, in a way, this is what makes life precious. Yes, some are preserved, physically healed, brought back to us. Yes, miracles can happen as the, in the passage from today. Nevertheless, not all are so blessed in these ways. For the Lord reveals in the Beatitude that blessedness does not always take the form of happy, healthy, or easygoing lives. No, blessing and blessedness belongs to those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst, those who are persecuted. Blessedness comes in the midst of the daily struggles of life. We often hope for the obvious miracle, a profound physical healing, the removal of the thorn of our sufferings. And yet the miraculous occurrences of life are often a little bit more subtle. The most profound miracle is to allow the reality of our suffering to transform the way in which we engage in our daily reality. The manner in which we live our lives ought to reflect the reality in which we live. It is imperative in this reality that we find ourselves in to live with intention. We must love with intention. We must remember that nothing is guaranteed. I think that one of the meanings that we could draw from today's passages when viewed together is this. In the healing of the woman with the flow of blood and the raising of Jairus' daughter, faith becomes the catalyst for healing. However, Paul, a faithful servant of the Lord, is not healed, though he beseeches the Lord three times. Taken together, we understand that we cannot expect, even with the deepest faith, to find ourselves free of suffering that comes to us in this life. So we are challenged to look for something deeper. Christ's power is made perfect in weakness. His grace is sufficient for us. We ought to look then not for the most remarkable of occurrences. If healing and raising from the dead is no less certain than having the thorn of illness removed from us, then perhaps in most cases we will not see the power, the grace, of God in these things. Instead, we will begin to see it in the way we, like Paul, persevere in the midst of our suffering and the suffering of the world around us. We will suffer in this world, and we look around us today at many great sufferings, many great challenges. But in faith, faith like St. Paul, faith like the woman with the flow of blood, faith like Jairus and his family, we can transform suffering into moments of miraculous encounter with God. We can be transformed in love for one another and for the world, making this reality a little bit more like the kingdom that we all hope for. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.